Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I'm in Nigeria for the second time. Arise, oh, compatriot. Nigeria's color. Yes, it feels so good to be back here again. But hey, Nigeria is not just Abuja and Lagos. This time around, I decided to explore the northern part of Nigeria. Actually, I am here because my friend is getting married. And when I go here, he decided to host me in this four bedroom Charlie. Oh my goodness, I know that my time in Nigeria is gonna be good. But hey, you know how we do it. I cannot come and stay here and see how beautiful this place is and decide to keep quiet. I really have to show you the person behind it. The first time seeing this face on your screen, my name is Wadamaya, an African YouTube vlogger who is on a journey to change the narratives of Africa. Please do me a favor, subscribe and let's hit 700,000 subscribers by the end of this month. And do me a favor by liking the video. Come with me, let me go talk to the Nigerian family behind this amazing resort that you've seen on your screen. The managing director of Porto Golf Resort. Yeah. You guys have done an amazing job, man. Thank you. Do you know that I never knew something like this exists here in Cannes? I'm really happy to have you here, and I'm sure you're not the first person that thinks that. Many people that live in Kano that come here still tell us how surprised they are to find something like this in Kano. This is really huge. You know, I've been to a golf resort. It's like a golf resort estate, but it's yeah. kind of different. I mean, you have even, um, I think, um, what do you call it, the polo? Yeah, the polo field. The golf course, Jeez, the arcade. Recreational center. Yeah. It's like everything yeah. involved. Which means you're building something for the whole kind of community or something. Yeah, and it's, we're looking, to be honest with you, we're doing it phase by phase. So we finish something, we start another. We finish something, we start another. But the whole concept is to, to sort of provide a community where everyone can come with their family, friends can come. So it's, it's supposed to be an integrated place where everyone has something to do at the same time. So you can come with your family, you can play golf while the kids are just the kids are playing. Your wife can be resting on the chalet. So it's it's a plus or minus, it's an all round yeah. environment for families and to come. Definitely they have someone like me who can swim. They can also use their <laughs> swimming pool. <laughs> That would be a lovely idea. I'd love to try you and see if you can swim. <laughs> so, I mean the location of this resort it's everything. Exactly, because it's just a mere 20 to 30 minutes from inside Kano. So it's, it's, it's doable and it's very accessible. And it's a very safe area, safe road. Uh, never had any issues that you could speak about. Nothing extra. So I'm, I'm, I'm very confident to say anyone can have access to this place. You at know, any given time. I don't know your name. My name is Wadamaya from Ghana, and you have to tell me your name. Uh, you Wadamaya, my name is Mohammed Mohammed Nakudu. Hey, you too, Mohammed? Yes. Okay, Mohammed Mohammed Nakudu. 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 Yes. It's a pleasure meeting you. Lovely to meet you. You know Mr. what? Wadamaya. I really wanted to see you because I want to know the African guy behind this project. I think I, I think I wouldn't put it as a guy. I would put it as the African family behind oh, this project. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm that so that's that would be a better way to put so, it. So an African family behind yeah, this project. Yeah, it's a family I mean, project. Who almost. started this project then? Uh, basically, my dad started this project uh, between 2005 to 2007. Uh, started acquiring different pieces of farmland over a period of time. Uh, at first, it was just a garden area. Uh, just with huts uh, and grass on top uh, for people to just come and visit and sit. And we made sandwiches, we sold drinks and ice cream and stuff like that. So over a period of time, we realized the traffic that we were getting. Uh, people were asking us, oh, do you have accommodation? I was like, oh, no, we don't currently, but we're working on it. So we started building the, the chalets, we built the clubhouse, we started the arcade, we started the golf course. So it's... 
it was a phase by phase project. It's not something that happened overnight. It's something that happened over a, a long time. Because I'm seeing the whole project, it's really huge. Yeah. And I'm like, how many acres are these, man? Approximately, let's say between 60 to 80 hectares, approximately. Yeah. So. That's incredible. But I hope you really like the place. No, no, no. It's not like, like it's an understatement. I really love it. And I just want to know there's something that I don't understand. Why the name Porto Golf Resort? I think Porto Golf Resort uh, is it derived from a place in Egypt called Porto Sukna. Okay. Uh, my dad used to go there uh, on holidays and he sort of loved the environment and how integrated everything was. And to an extent felt we never had anything like that here. Hmm. So got the image there, got the idea, started executing slowly with obviously the, the dream of realizing a bigger and better environment over a period of time but uh, that's a gradual thing and that's something we're working on and we've been working on from the beginning um, as you can see this place every day when you come there's something new every day it's there they are improvements we try and maintain it as much as we can uh, we try and manage the staff as much as we can we try and help the community as much as we can so it's an all-round project that everyone benefits from. It's not just us. Um, I think the community will be very glad to have us because 70 to 80 percent of the people that work here are from uh, the Munjibur local government, which is where the resort is located. So plus or minus, even employment wise, I think we've done well to, to put our people's interest at heart. Uh, Mohammed, yeah. you said your father started a project. Yeah. I mean, where were you that time when daddy started the project? When he started the project, I was in London at the time. I was doing my A-levels. Uh, started in 2008 and then I finished in 2010. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, I had you a lawyer. Yeah, practically. I went, I studied law at university in Southampton from 2010 to 2013. Uh, did my master's in Holt Business School from 2013 to 2014. And then I got back to Nigeria, did my NYSC first, then I went to law school. Why would you leave the UK and then come and manage a resort in Africa? I think for me, personally, uh, the most important thing for me is to make sure whatever you do, you make a difference. You have an impact on people's lives. Uh, you create employment. Uh, you have the sort of control you want in, in, in a certain environment. In London, it's, yes, it's possible to get a job, it's possible to work for someone, but it's very difficult to have the sort of impact. And there was no better place to do that than coming back home because obviously whoever you're, it's, it's, it's boosting the economy in Africa, the tourism sector. So everything I do now, apart from the practice I do, uh, everything I do is tourism related. From the hotel to the resort to the football. Oh, so, you, you have a hotel too? Yeah, so the resort has a, there's a subsidiary okay. of the resort which is called Portogo Hotels, which is in inside town. Uh, we have about 64 rooms now, but we're expanding it to about 100 rooms approximately by the end of the year. So the, like, this one was the first project? This one was the first project. The hotel just opened two years ago. Oh. So this resort gave birth to the hotel. The hotel yeah. And um, personally, I just want to know, yeah, when you go back, daddy was doing this one. Mm. He came to continue. Yeah. What about the hotel? I mean, two years ago, which means that... The, ho the hotel, I, I started from scratch. Like, by yourself? It was my idea, 110%. 110%. Was that from, your first ever project that you started alone in um, here? That was my second project. My first project was my fire, six aside football, AstroTurf football pitch. Mm. Uh, called La Sultana. I started that right after coming back from university, um, built it, designed it on paper with a pen and paper. <laughs> I know you must think I'm crazy, but no, I actually designed it on paper, uh, built it, uh, commissioned it and opened it officially. Everything started working. Uh, then I went to law school. After I went to law school, I decided, okay, maybe it was the right time to to do the hotel but then I didn't have as much time as I wanted so I started the hotel project 
then I went to law school. So every weekend I used to drive or take the plane from Abuja to Kano to go and see what was going on, to sort of get an idea of what we needed to do going forward. So slowly, it was a gradual thing, but we slowly put it together and the hotel was done in a similar way, obviously with architects and engineers and people that knew their stuff. Mine was to bring the idea to the table, agree on what needs to be done and just make sure it's done. That, that's the sort of way in which yeah. I work. And um, if I should ask you what makes Porto Golf Resort unique, what are you going to tell me? To be honest with you, they, there's no, there's, they, they, you don't need to go beyond certain words to understand what Porto Golf is. There are not many places. The, in the whole northern Nigeria, you can count how many resorts there are as a complete facility. There are not many resorts that have half of the facilities we do. The environment, number one, is very serene. Okay. Number two, we try and maintain what we have as much as we can. Number three, we're always working on ways in which we can improve our customer service. Okay. Number four, every single year, there's a certain phase of the project that moves forward. So it's, it's if you come this year and you don't come back till next year, you will definitely see something new. So I think people look forward to things like that because no one wants to see a stagnant business with no improvement and stuff like that. So we, we try as much as possible to, to push the project forward so that it can come to an end. And for your own information, there's something I need to tell you. What is it? Since we started this project, we've never taken, taken one dime out of it. Everything that is made in the business is put back into the business just to make sure that we get to where we want to get to. You mean like you make profit, but you're not using the profit? No, we've never taken anything out of this business. From the, for the two, since I've been back, I can assure you, none, nothing has been taken out of this business. Yeah. What are the kind of activities that goes on in here? The main thing that goes on here, practically, the, the face of the place, is the golf. Okay. The golf defines the place okay. because golf is a very well uh, respected uh, sport. It's played by very mature individuals in a very sensible manner. The golf is the face of the resort. Uh, we have the polo, um, which is a lot more aggressive and a lot more exciting. Uh, so you can see the, the difference there. And apart from that, we have uh, a football pitch. Uh, we have the outdoor arcade, which has the, the swings and all these yeah. activities that people will be excited to to be part of. We have the indoor arcade. Uh, we have the cha we have the chalets. We have the rooms. We have the conference hall. We have the garden. So I think we've we've given enough activities for people to to do when they come here. Uh, whatever you want, I think there will be something for you to okay. do. Okay. I saw an ostrich in here. Yeah, we have a few animals, funny enough. I forgot what? about horse riding. and <laughs> You can ride donkeys no. and camels if you want. No, uh, I don't think I will be able to try that. Why? Why? No, no, why? In Ghana, thing. do you have donkeys? Eh? Do you have donkeys have in Ghana? donkeys, <laughs> but I only play with dogs, you know. Why? Uh, no, that's the so if you can I play with if you can play with a dog, I don't see why you'd be scared of a donkey. <laughs> to be honest, I would love you. I would love you to go horse riding. Uh, I'm scared of horses myself, but I think uh, uh, if you are scared, then I'm more scared. Uh, no, you should you should be scared. No. You're, you're here to explore different things. Yeah, I'm here to explore different things. Yeah, yeah. but maybe in my next life. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh my God! So so you want to leave Ghana, come to Nigeria, uh, yeah. and not ride a horse? No, but at least I can come to Kano. And eat Amala. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> interesting. I see that. I see what you're trying to do uh, there. Food is my hobby. It's okay. So uh, far as there's food, I've tried something. No, like, fair, <laughs> fair, no. fair yeah, point. I, I, I just want to know, yeah, we have several, so many Nigerians in the diaspora, especially like Africans in general living abroad. You mm. lived there, you came back, brought a change to the continent. If you should advise your fellow brothers and sisters living abroad to come back home, what would that message be? I think, to be honest, personally, from personal experience, mm -hmm. what I feel is when you live in the UK, for instance, what that offers you is it offers you comfort and security. 
so you can survive. If, be it 50, 100 years, you can survive. But progression is very difficult when you live outside of your comfort zone, for instance. What you get here is when people that have lived abroad come back home, what they offer to the community here has so much value because they are more exposed. Uh, they will probably have more experience uh, and they have a lot of network that can bring a lot of, make a lot of difference to our people here. And I feel when you come here is when you put whatever you've learned there into use. And to, to be honest, there's no better place to make uh, a difference than where you come from. And if we grow our tourism sector here, do we need to go somewhere else? No. People in, in this December, the whole world was in Dubai. The only African country that was as busy in terms of tourism and people from outside the country coming in is probably Ghana. Yeah. Nowhere else, everywhere else was very but, quiet. But, but, but why do you think it's like that? I think it's our mentality, it's, it's our mindset. We don't appreciate what we have. Thank you. We always look beyond what we have. So let's say for instance now, I can go to Kenya and have an amazing time. Mm -hmm. But I'll say, oh no, I want to go to Maldives. But I could say, I'm not saying don't go to the Maldives, but I think it's important for us to appreciate and support businesses within Africa before going out of Africa. Because if we don't support ourselves, no one would even know we have what we have. We have to put what we have out there for people to know we have it for them to come here. Yeah. And that is why I always tell Africans that if you are doing something, please send me an email. Let me come and visit you because and if I didn't come here, definitely you wouldn't know from Ghana would never know that something like this exists yeah. here. Yeah. You see, um, brother, I just want to ask you, uh, if you had opportunity to change something in Nigeria or Africa, what would that be? Our mindset. Our mindset. I mean, the way we think. Yeah, the way we think is the biggest problem we have. There is a certain way to do things for a certain reason. That's logic. The logical way is usually the right way. Even if it's not the right way, it's the closest thing to the right way. But generally, I'm not, I'm not going to pick on Nigerians because I'm Nigerian, obviously. Mm. But generally, Africans always find a way to cut corners. There is always, they always find a way to cut corners. They can't just be straight and do it. There is a right way of doing things. But we always have, a, have to find a way to go around the system to get a result. If we all follow the right way, then I think we'll all be fine. So it's the mindset. If we change our mindset, it goes a long way. If we change our mindset, it goes a long way. But I wanted to know, um, if somebody is coming to Kano, why must that person visit Porto Golf Resort and Porto Golf Hotel? There's nowhere better. That's why our motto is, it's a different world. It's really a different world. I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing interview. And uh, please do me a favor, like the video. And most importantly, subscribe and be part of this YouTube channel. Like I said, this month we need to reach 700,000 subscribers. By the end of the year, we need to hit a million. Please be part of this family by subscribing. It's free to subscribe and it's free to support an African YouTube channel. It's a favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.